Today, I want to talk a little bit about the assign and the assign attribute modules within Arena. Let's go ahead and get started. This is going to allow you to do some really interesting stuff in your Arena simulations, including giving entities a different processing time for each station, depending on something like the entity type or if they have been reworked. It's also going to let you do things like change the entity picture and do a bunch of other really interesting stuff within your Arena simulations. I'm going to assume that you already know a little bit about Arena, like what the Create, Dispose modules, Decide modules, Process modules are. If you don't, that's okay. I have previous videos in this tutorial series. By the way, you can subscribe to see more Arena videos. Let's go ahead and get started. So this simulation here is a milling, grinding, and polishing simulation. Just three different stations, pretty simple. There's some different logic between these that was going to have parts which are going to fail inspection, you know, 10% chance of failing the first one. Second one's a little bit higher. There's some scrap and there's just some rework possibility one. And the last one is pretty simple too, just a pass or fail. Now what I've done here, and based on the previous video on decide modules, is if a part has been reworked, it's going to pass 100% of the time, except for station two. For station one, that's kind of done through a nested if statement here using two different decide modules on screen. The better way to do it, however, is like I have done for decide three, where I combine those expressions together, and you can get much more complicated with that, like I talked about in my decide and showed some examples in my decide module video. Let's talk a little bit about the assign modules and when you want to use those. The assign module can be really useful, and that's when you can do things like assign an attribute, assign a variable, and a bunch of other stuff, entity picture, entity type, a bunch of really interesting things to incoming entities. And you can get more complicated and do, th do things in sort of a grid system too, and have sort of matrices within that. I'm not gonna get quite that complicated because this is just arena basics. What I want to do for the first one is look at our simulation from last time. What you can see here is that the entities flow through the system here and they're just blue dots. Some of them are going to fail and are going to go down to the reworked one, but when they come out, it's hard to tell that they've actually been reworked and you can't necessarily verify the logic that things are working correctly. Now there is a pretty simple fix to this and it's actually using the one assign module I already have installed, which is assign one because what this does is it assigns a variable named rework and gives it a value of one. The other thing that I can do in this case here, if I stop the simulation, is I can go into assign one and add something and I can say that the entity picture is now going to be, say, a red ball. What this does is now every time an entity flows into this system, which we can see a little bit further down here, it's going to come out to being, well, red, which is a good way to tell it's reworked. Now, when this reworked one gets to the side four, it should go yes 100% of the time. It's currently in the milling operation, wait till it leaves, just left, and it went through that. And once it's finished with polishing, it should go through the top, which let's see, looks like, well, let's wait for this one. It looks like it did, so that's working correctly there. You can do a bunch of other more complicated and more interesting things for this. Let's say instead of one part with an exponential time between arrivals here of 1.2 minutes, we actually have three entities. Entity one is going to be common, entity two will be less common, and entity three is going to be really, really rare. And you want different processing times for your more rare, more expensive items, for instance. What you could do is use some assign attributes and some left we'll adding some create ones first to give these things different values and then call that value. So I'm going to get uh, more create modules in here, create module two and three. These are gonna be pretty close to uh, entity one. We'll give you some inter-arrival times here that are going to be longer, maybe three minutes for that second one. And let's see, eight minutes for this last one. Now we're gonna give them entity type, entity type going to be entity three because I'm creative with my naming. And entity type number two here is going to be entity two. And let's see, we'll give this one a value of two minutes between arrivals just to make things a little longer and our processes don't take quite too long. Now what this does here is we, now we have three incoming items. And just for consistency, I can go down here and get some pictures. So we're gonna change all these default ones. Entity three is going to be a green ball. And then the last one can be a yellow ball. For all of them, they're going to turn into a red ball when they've been reworked. You can change that a little bit if you wanted to differently. 
with some more complicated assignments down in this bottom one, or some if statements leading into assignments. It's kind of like coding in that you can do nested if statements. If it's reworked and entity type one, give it this color. If it's reworked and entity type two, give it this color, stuff like that. Okay, so we have our three different grade modules. And in order for this first processing, this first process, the milling process to have a different time, we're going to need to assign an attribute to each one of these. So I'm just going to do assign attribute one. And what I'm going to do is say that the entity, we're going to give it a new attribute and we're going to call that processing time for station one or milling. And we're going to give this a value. I could just give you a deterministic value, give you processing time of one minute for your common, one and a half for your rare, and two and a half maybe for your last one. Instead, I'm going to use the expression builder and give it, say, distribution. You can do random, you can do whatever you want, really. You can do normal, you can do triangular. I'm just going to do uniform for this one, the value between 30 seconds and one minute. Base time units are important, and those will be considered when you actually get to the uh, uh, process module itself. So this first one, I'm giving a new attribute, pt underscore one, new value is going to be uniform between zero and one, and that will be recalculated every time a new entity arrives. We're going to copy this and do the same thing for the second and third create modules with the second and third entity types. And the second one is going to still have processing time for station one, but we're going to say the maximum time is going to increase to three, and this last one, the maximum time is going to increase well, let's go all the way up to seven. And those are going to be minutes because again, this million process right here, we're going to change it from a delay type of triangular to a expression delay type. And the expression is just going to be PT sub one. And you can see the base time units is minutes. If I change this to hours, it will do between 0 0.5 hours and whatever the high value I specified. Okay, great. And this, you can do all sorts of other things with this. You can change the entity type if you want, you can change the sort of state of a bunch of stuff if you want, it should be really interesting. Now what this is going to allow me to do is when I play this, I'm going to have different amounts of times for these entities that they're going to go through the milling process. You only need one milling process, you don't need to do milling process for one, milling process for two, etc. If I pause this actually and click on this red entity, you're going to see that it has user-defined characteristics. The processing time sub one is the value according to the entity type, which looks like we could look at that later if we wanted to, and the rework value is still equal to one. So that's what you can see here. Each of these different dots is going to flow through and they're going to have different times and su such for this first station. I can do the same for station number two and the same for the last station if I wanted to. Let's just jump to the very end here. I might actually need to stop this and uh, change my base time unit. It looks like my base time unit is an hour. So we're going to go into run, run setup. Base time unit is going to be in minutes instead. That's why I had everything else on. And what I want you to do is show you that the processing time, the value added time for the milling operation is going to be greater than 0 0.5, but likely greater than one minute as well. Okay, milling value added time per entity, one and a half minutes just about, which is a weighted average based on the number out here and the expected value or the realized value should be pretty close to expected with this many entities of these assigned modules. So that's what an assigned module lets you do. We can actually pair that with a few other things. So what we can do is let's say we want to know the time that the entity got to the grinding station in every particular case. Well, what I can do here is maybe I'll do it. I'll do that right here is I'll assign an attribute and I'll put this in just here, just in front of the grinding station. I can move things around a little bit. Everything's going to come into this. And what I'm going to do is add an attribute. And we're just going to call this time enter time enter. And this value is going to be equal to T now. This is arena syntax. You can look this up through the build expression. There's a bunch of other uh, items, for instance, time and date functions. You want the current time that the entity hits the module. You can do current simulation time, which is T now. And what this does is it will give you a value for T enter. Okay, great. That is T enter, we're gonna save that. What we might want to consider is the difference between the grinding station and the sort of uh, final stations. 
So that's the sign attribute. What I can do is now that that works, I'm going to, before my dispose module, give it another attribute, which I can move over here. And looks like not quite what I want. I want both of these connectors to flow into the same assign attribute. What I'm going to do is add another attribute. And we're going to call this uh, T duration, T D R. And that's going to be equal to the, to the difference between T now, which is going to be the value at the very end of the simulation when that entity eventually gets there, minus T enter. And if we spell those correctly, everything should work okay. And this will give you however much time the entity has spent uh, between the grinding station and between the time that it leaves. If you felt so inclined, you could actually go through and do a little bit of uh, recording, for instance, at the very end, and you could record that value or that entity there, which that's a different module, so not necessarily the scope of this video. You could write that to a file. You can do a whole bunch of other stuff. So let's add in the record module just very briefly. We're going to, you could actually just uh, record entity statistics. Let's see, time interval might be a better way to do this. So we're going to do time between, so that's the time between entities, time interval is going to be between T enter, and we're going to call this really whatever you want, time tally, because this is a tally statistic. So we're actually just going to compare some of this stuff. Uh, hopefully you're going to get the same module, but there's a bonus record one thrown in there for you. Let's go ahead and check if this works and runs with no errors. It might give you an error when it gets to assign attribute 5. Looks like it didn't, so that's pretty good. Now what we could do, if I you know, pause it as an entity is going through this stuff, I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to hit one of these entities at the very end, but let's just run through the simulation and see exactly what's going on. If I pause it in any particular time, this red dot has gotten to the grinding station, and you can see that the user-defined attribute of T enter is 68. So it's 68, and it's currently 203. It got into the grinding station. I would bet you that it's not overriding. So we can see here, this is 201. It's not overriding that first one, it looks like. Okay, there's T enter 201. So both of those got there at a pretty close period of time, 201.03, 201.82. At the very end, we're going to get some differences between that. So let's go ahead and jump through the entire station and fast forward through that. Okay, if we take a look at our results, there's a bunch of info here now that we have two. There's identifier, we have T tally, our tally statistic there, which is the difference between or the average time it takes once they get to grinding to actually coming out is 117. That's a good way to do that one. And you can look for the other one. It might or might not be in here, depending on which version of reports you're able to use. You'll actually be able to see specific values right here. The semen summary report might not do this for you. It doesn't always co cooperate very well. And currently the report system that's supposed to work is a little bit broken, at least on my computer. Okay, well, I hope this did teach you a little bit about the assign functions and how you're able to use those, assign and assign attribute. You can do a bunch of really interesting things with those, including giving a different processing time to the same station, depending on something like entity typed, or even if something has been reworked before. I hope this was helpful, and I hope to see you in another arena simulation tutorial.